Hi, John French here. I'd like to talk to you about my book, Beef Art Through the Eyes of Magic, which has just come out in its third printing. So, excited about that because all of you people who keep asking me questions, trivia questions, they're all in this. So, you should get this book. And that way, I don't have to keep answering these damn questions over and over. Just kidding. I don't mind doing it sometimes, but sometimes I think, gee, if they had my book, they'd know this stuff already. Um, so, the third printing of uh, the book will be released soon, and I'm supposed to uh, talk a little bit about it. So, first of all, I'd like to just describe the book. It's 864 pages, which is it's quite lengthy. It has it's packed with information, trivia, everything that I could think of. Plus, I have 23 interviews with uh, friends and band members, whoever that I could get who knew about the group, who had insights into the story behind the group, and uh, so on. You know these kind of things. Even went back and found. Uh, a couple of the blackouts and the omens and the guys that really were the early uh, pioneers of rhythm and blues in the Antelope Valley, uh, including Johnny Franklin and Pete Lovio, who is no longer with us, um, and Alex Snoffer, who is no longer with us. So these stories, even though the people aren't here anymore, these stories will live on through the book. Um, the book has 90 pages of track notes and what this means is I went track by track through every legitimate release of beef art material and went through all the the tracks one at a time and described everything I could remember about them I did leave out the uh, unconditionally guaranteed and in, in uh, blue jeans and moon memes because really I didn't know anything about the music uh, it was uh, during a time when I was completely absent and I wasn't familiar with any of the material. Um, other than that, I tried to approach it like a journalist. Um, and I, I thought, well, where can I get photos for this? Well, I had a few photos and, uh, and band members loaned me photos and stuff and said, yeah, you can use this. But I was actually able to contact the late, great Guy Webster and get 16 outtakes, studio outtakes, or photo outtakes from his shoots for Safe as Milk and Strictly Personal. So that was a real honor to me because I didn't even think he'd, he'd remember who I was. I told him I was writing this book, got in contact with him. He called me back. I was very excited. And he said, yeah, I'll... Uh, come down, you know, so we set up an appointment. And uh, Matt Groening was there also, and Matt Groening picked out the title cover, uh, title photo, I mean. So anyway, um, I tried to approach it like a journalist, as I said, and make it as truthful as I could. I'd like to relay a little story from the book. This is kind of a dark story in a way. Um, I'm trying to do amusing things, uh, for the other stories, but this is sort of a dark story that came to mind that was, um, it kind of surprised me in a way when it happened. It was during the trout mess replica time when we were all living in that house on the hill. And uh, it was the only time that I can recall ever being alone in the house with Don for any period of time. Um, the I think it was like Christmas or Thanksgiving. Everybody had gone home to be with their families, including Don's girlfriend at the time, Lori, Lori Stone. And so it was just Don and I there. And I remember it was, you know, like maybe early afternoon. I went down the long stairway. <laughs> there was a long stairway up to that house, a couple of flights of stairs at least, uh, to get up to the house. <clears throat> and I went down that long stairway, and our mailbox was half a, half a block down the street. 
So I had to walk way down there to get the mail. It wasn't a long way, but it, you know, it took like five minutes. So <clears throat> I went down to check on the mail and uh, came back. And when I came back, Don was like shaking and very pale. And I said, what's the matter? And he started looking at me and, and he was going, John, there were people here. There were people here. And I said, what do you mean people here? And he said, it was like there was a party going on in the house. I was surrounded by people. They were having drinks and laughing and there was music going on. And, and there were people here. And they didn't see me and I couldn't talk. There were people here. It was like he was seeing ghosts in the house. Maybe, you know, like some kind of trance of time you know he went through some kind of time warp or something that's the first thing that came to my mind was that he went through some kind of time warp now I'm pretty open-minded and most people go e -e, you're crazy but most people go e -e, you're crazy anyway to me <laughs> so anyway I got him calmed down but um, he was truly visibly shaken and um, he's a pretty good actor but I know he wasn't acting this was for real. He was definitely terrified about whatever he experienced while I was gone that five minutes. And uh, I kind of discovered that he really had a fear of being alone. He didn't like being alone at all. And um, so it was a strange thing for a man who seemed so fearless about his music and so bold to see this sort of... Um, you know, this sort of vulnerability that he had about being alone. Um, anyway, that concludes this story. And uh, like I said again, Beefheart, Through the Eyes of Magic by John Durango French in its third printing now. So stay tuned at the end of this and you'll see information embedded on the website to go to in order to to order your product. Take care. And also, my CD is being re-released uh, with a slip cover that I signed and also a vinyl version of my album, City of Refuge, is being released and it's been mastered for vinyl. So it should be pretty cool. Anyway, check it out and see what you think. Thanks a lot for listening. John French, signing out.